Hello, in this video we are going to work another wheel and axle problem. See the problem at the top of the screen. The figure on the left shows a bucket that is used to raise water from a deep well via a wheel and axle system that's 75% efficient. When full, the bucket weighs 20 pounds. The axle is 8 inches in diameter and the distance from the center of the axle to the crank handle is 16 inches. Question number one. What is the ideal mechanical advantage of the wheel and axle? In this case, we are using the wheel to drive the axle to pull, to wind the rope and pull the bucket up. So our formula for ideal mechanical advantage, since the wheel is driving the axle, is the radius of the wheel divided by the radius of the axle. The radius of the wheel is the distance from the, ax the center of the axle out to the crank handle, which is given as 16 inches. The radius of the axle is not given, but the diameter is said to be 8 inches. Therefore, the radius will be 4 inches. When I divide 16 by 4, I get an ideal mechanical advantage of 4. What is the question number two? What is the actual mechanical advantage of the wheel and axle? For actual mechanical advantage, if you look at the formulas at the bottom of the screen, we need to do force out divided by force in. But I wasn't given the amount of force in. I know that the bucket weighs 20 pounds, so my output force is going to be 20, but now I have two variables. That's where knowing that the system is 75% efficient is really important for us because now I can use the percent efficiency formula to do AMA divided by IMA times 100 because we just found IMA and I know the efficiency. So percent efficiency equals the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage times 100. My percent efficiency is 75%. I'm looking for actual mechanical advantage, so I'm going to leave that alone. The ideal mechanical advantage I just found to be 4, so I'm going to plug that in, and then times 100. In order to undo multiplying by 100, we need to divide by 100 on both sides. And then in order to solve for AMA, I need to undo dividing by 4, so now I'm going to multiply by 4 on both sides. And my actual mechanical advantage is going to be 4. Oh, not 4. 4 times 0.75, which is 3. Okay, there is a third question. Under ideal conditions, how much effort must be applied to the crank handle to raise the bucket of water? So we're going to think about ideal conditions would be where the ideal mechanical advantage equals the actual mechanical advantage. So we're going to say that ideal mechanical advantage will equal the force out divided by the force in because AMA is given by force out divided by force in. If it was ideal, there would they would those two would be equal. So my ideal mechanical advantage is four, as we found in problem number one. The force output or the force of resistance is the weight of the bucket when it's full, so that's going to be 20 pounds. And then we're going to find the force in. <coughs> So to undo dividing by the force in, I need to multiply by the force in on both sides. Okay. 
And then to get the force in by itself, I need to divide by four, both sides. In ideal conditions, it would take five pounds of force <clears throat> to lift this bucket. Last question. What is the actual amount of force? Because we know that we do not live in an ideal world, so we do have um, outside forces acting on us that shows down some of our efficiency. So what's the ideal or the actual am amount of effort force that must be applied to the crank handle to raise the bucket of water? So now we're gonna go back to actual mechanical advantage equals the force out divided by the force in. And if you'll go back to question number two's answer, we found the actual mechanical advantage to be three. And now the force out is still a 20 pound bucket of water and we still need to find the force in, what we're actually gonna have to put in effort to raise this bucket. The problem, the steps to solve this will be the same as what we did in three. We're gonna multiply both sides by the force in. And then we're gonna have to divide both sides by three. So 6.67 pounds. So now instead, in an ideal world, we would only have to use five pounds of force to lift this bucket, but because we're having to work against friction and gravity, then it's gonna really require six and two thirds pounds of force to lift the bucket. And there is your another example problem for wheel and axle.